Hey, good to be back with you. I know I have not posted a video for about five months. <laughs> and that is because we have had the most crazy, intense, ridiculous five months of initial teacher training that I'm sure anyone has ever had. Um, we've had lockdowns, we've had uncertainty, we've had tons of changes and restrictions and all knows what, all while trying to learn how to teach, to refine our practice and to just become uh, competent and efficient teachers. It has been an absolute whirlwind and I don't really think that I fully realised quite how busy it was going to be. Sometimes I would just come home absolutely exhausted five o'clock, get into bed and fall asleep until the next day because I was tired. And so I didn't have enough time to do all the video stuff that I wanted to do. So I'm trying to catch up now where I can. And I've got videos from summer that I recorded and just didn't get around to editing. So my experience so far, um, the first thing I'm going to say is that everything I expected to have or for teaching to be, was not exactly how it was. I expected to have my own classroom. I did not have my own classroom. I was carrying a minions bag with my laptop, pens, pencils around the school um, quite ridiculously for a six foot seven man um, probably, but I couldn't carry it any other way. There was too much stuff and I would dart between classrooms every lesson. Um, so that was one expectation I didn't have. I expected to be able to teach without a mask. Um, that didn't quite go down. I had to wear a visor and a mask. And yeah, that was a tough one because my hair, although it's short now, it was long at one point and kids would laugh at me for my funny hairstyles the visor made. And I couldn't see when I was trying to take the register. I just couldn't see through the visor. Um, and because all the kids were wearing masks, I was wearing a mask. There was a lot of like, can you repeat that? What did you say? Can you repeat that? I don't know what you're saying. And it would just go on and on. Um, I didn't expect for kids to just, the amount of kids that were absent from lessons and had to catch up and had to do things, it was just crazy. Sometimes whole year groups were sent home and we had to kind of just like catch them up or present them with some stuff really quickly and we didn't always know. Um, so everything I expected was not how it actually happened. All the training, all the essays, I expected to go to uni someday. Days I expected to, um, you know, have my Teach First support come in and see me teach. Like none of that has happened, all because of Corona, and I'll talk about that later on. But as part of my experience, everything that I expected was not how it was. Um, on the credit to Teach First, they've done a really good job of being available to support us. Um, we've had lots of Zoom calls, lots of support. They've always answered emails efficiently. They've given us lots of training, um, lots of support in that way. And although it's really weird being chucked in right in the deep end, like my first day, I was expected to teach a double year 11 class, creative writing. And obviously with my five weeks of Summer Institute, I don't think I felt all that prepared. Um, but I went in, I took that step and I have only grown in competence and in my own teaching ability and confidence because I've had so much opportunity to practice it each and every day. I'm given the responsibility and title of a teacher and so I am therefore able to step up and meet that requirement and yeah, to be a teacher, which I think is a really positive thing. It's scary, um, it throws you, but at the same time, you learn really quickly and you learn to rise to the challenge and all of the expectations that are asked of you. Um, I think I'm really lucky that I've had an incredible department. Like my mentor has been phenomenal in supporting me. Uh, she's given me so much constructive advice, uh, support, um, so many compliments and what went well. And um, I think my experience would have been a lot harder if I hadn't had such a supportive department. And I'm really lucky that I had some other Teach Firsters there so we could, you know, chat about the struggles, we could have a laugh together because we didn't actually get all of that that we would have, um, all of that socialization in Summer Institute because it was all online. So I really, really appreciate that and I'm really grateful to have that. And then I also realized that I'm kind of like, a small fish in a very big pond of education and I think potentially I had some really naive views of the of the impact I could have straight away and I realized that I have so much to learn so much to um, change about myself so much growth to have 
before I'm actually able to really make the change that I want to see. And I realized quite quickly in that the best way to have an impact was actually by being an excellent teacher and, and by refining everything that I do. And so even if it was just um, small little changes I made to my planning or to my delivery or to my corrections, these were really big changes that would eventually kind of carry on and become my practice and my process and turn me into an excellent teacher. And that's where I can have the biggest impact and play, you know, my most important part. So yeah, that's a little bit about my experience so far and a little bit about what I've learned. Like if I really, it has been truly crazy. No, no one has known what's happening. If you've read some of the articles and reports, um, all teachers are saying that this is the most difficult year they've faced as of yet, which I just think is absolutely crazy. So yeah, let's quickly talk about, I guess, um, the number one thing that has taken up 2020 and the beginning of 2021, COVID implications and all that that has involved. And yeah, we've had so many restrictions at school. There were points where uh, management was coming round to the offices and we weren't allowed to have any more than two people in an office. So, and our school doesn't have tons of space. So we, we were hiding out in DT rooms and wherever we could find empty classrooms, just like either on your own, which could be quite isolatory, I guess, if that's even a word, I don't quite know. Um, but it could, yeah, it can make you feel quite on your own because you have to work by yourself or with one other person and you're not allowed to be within two meters of anyone. You're not allowed to actually like really interact properly with the kids because you can't go close to them. Um, there were just so many restrictions and let alone trying to figure out just how to teach, how to plan, how to deliver your lessons, how to be in classroom and your persona. You have to kind of manage all of these other restrictions that they've put on, the one-way system of the school, uh, where you gr year groups are allowed to be, uh, the timings that were completely different from a normal day, everything's staggered. Um, you had to wear a mask and a visor, you, you had to hand wash and kids, kids have an obsession with hand sanitizer. Like the amount of kids running in and out of the class for hand sanitizer, and I didn't really know if I should stop them because am I denying them protection from COVID? Like, it's so confusing. Um, so there were a ton of restrictions that COVID brought about that really impacted how I was able to kind of just navigate my way through the first couple of months of teaching. And I think everyone's found this, but the constant unknown of what is going to happen next? Like, are we going to be in school next week? Are we not? Are we going to be able to do this? Are we able to see our friends? Are we able to like go for a walk? Am I allowed to go shopping? Like, we don't know what's happening. And even more in school, and I'm sure lots of you have found this if you're in education or you have kids or your family or whatever, is you had no idea what was happening until it just happened. And you'd get like an email coming through on the last day being like, yep, uh, we're not coming back to school or they, these guys aren't doing, and you'd be like, what, what's happening? Um, and while that's kind of fun at first, it's also a bit exhausting because you never know really what's gonna happen and it's hard to plan as well. We talked a lot about like long-term, medium-term planning. That kind of all got thrown out the window a little bit because your plans would change so quickly. You had to be really adaptive. Um, and maybe that's a strength. Maybe I'm going to be a really adaptable teacher now. Um, so thank you, COVID. But I don't think I enjoyed the unknown at any rate. As I said, there was a different timetable um, for everything. And we had um, like different timetables. The first term was all in school and we got to do that with sometimes they were sent home and little bits of online teaching. And then this last term from January to February has been all online teaching. Um, so I've had to really quickly adapt to being able to teach online. And this is also interesting in the response of the kids. Like, because the kids don't really know what's going on, uh, they don't know if they're having exams or what, their response to what you're doing is really interesting. And the amount of kids that were absent uh, just from lessons, like if they had a cough, they, they didn't come in. So anyone who had any sort of sign of illness didn't come to school. Or if they'd been near someone who had had COVID, they were shielding for two weeks, so they'd missed two weeks. And that could happen like continuously. So the interaction and response from the kids was really interesting and kind of not a normal way of interacting, I don't think, uh, between teacher and student. And yet, as I've said, and I'll talk about in a bit, learning to teach online, you've spent the first term just about getting your head around teaching in the classroom. And they're like, yeah, forget, don't worry about all of that. We're going to online teaching now. This is how it works. And you have to kind of readjust and learn how to teach in a completely different way um, 
from how we did and that was really interesting. So they're just come up, kind of a few of the COVID implications that we've faced so far. Um, so I'm gonna talk a bit about Teach First now and their response and the training we've had, the university essays. And this has been a really interesting and intense experience because you, there's so much CPD as a, and by CPD I mean continuous professional development. You, I think I have like three to four training sessions a week and that's not including when I have the like Saturday Teach First training days um, and then the Friday UCL days. So sometimes I'm doing like six and they throw so much information at you and it's all via web, like all via online Zoom chats and whatnot that your, your head is like full to bursting and you literally can't sit on a computer for any longer than you already are. And I think it's also a bit annoying that they don't communicate between the providers. So my school gives CPD and then I have the trust that gives CPD and then we have UCL, then we have Teach First who do communicate a bit more. But sometimes you're like, I've covered that right at the beginning of Summer Institute and now they're going through in baby steps how to vary your tone of voice or how to like stand in front of a class. And I'm like, we kind of practice that. Like I've done this for three months now. I don't, don't need you to tell me again. Um, which may be a bit of a cynical way of looking at it. But I just found that, and I'm just trying to be honest because the CPD was, it's really useful, but it becomes a point where instead of learning loads, they might say one good thing in an hours long CPD because you've heard the rest of it already and you understand it. Um, and obviously being online, it's really hard to just sit and listen to your computer if you're sat at home or if you really just want to go home. Um, it can be quite difficult to retain concentration via the medium of online Zoom. And some of it, because obviously they're trying as hard as they can to adapt, some of it hasn't been applicable straight away. So they might be teaching us uh, while we're doing online learning and we're trying to figure out how to do that, they're teaching us about in the classroom practice. And we're like, well, we can't use that right now because we're not in the classroom. Um, but obviously, because everything's changing so quickly, they haven't been able to adapt as quickly sometimes. And you're like, the training wants to be applicable. Otherwise you're like, what's the point in doing the training right now? Um, and so all that information is shoved at you and I'm just worried I'm gonna forget half of it or I, cause I'm tired, I'm like, oh, I'm not really interested in paying attention. And then you have to try and sort through and actually engage and it can become quite a process just with the amount and it not being applicable, you're repeating it. On the other hand of that, some of it has been really, really useful and um, like the bit we've done on SEND, EAL learning and higher ability students um, has been really eye-opening to some of the statistics um, and how we can better ourselves as teachers. And when it is applicable, it's really engaging and it's really, really useful. So um, that's my thoughts kind of on the CPD. On the essay, um, just prepare yourself pretty much for the essay because they, they tease you in with a 5,000 word word count, give you a nice question like, oh, it's all good. What they don't tell you is that the appendix will be about 15,000 words and it will take you years to complete, which I found out the hard way in my first essay. Um, so the essay isn't too bad, like actually writing the essay. I was like, okay, I can do this. It was the 15,000 words of lesson plans, evidencing, journals, written up conversation that I hadn't quite planned on taking me so long that took up the majority of my essay. Um, so be prepared for that. And if you are thinking about Teach First, be very prepared for the Saturday trainings, right? You think, like, when it's far away, you think, oh, I'll be okay with a Saturday training. When you're exhausted from a full week in school, the last thing you want to do is log on for a nine to five of training. So just be prepared, read the small print, decide whether you're willing, and you have that conversation with yourself. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the online teaching. It is so different from in the classroom teaching, right? You lose that immediate response of knowing whether or not your students have understood what you've told them to do, or whether you're making any sense, or whether any of them are even there. Um, sometimes at the end of my online lessons, I will have just like 10 students who haven't left, and it's been like five minutes at the end of the lesson. So I'm like having to kick them out knowing that they're definitely doing something else. And then I think it pops up on their, like, on their Teams thing, because we use Teams, saying you've been kicked from this lesson and they jump back in, but obviously everyone's left. Um, so that kind of makes me laugh a little bit, a little bit of joy in my uh, online teaching days, but it is so different. Um, you have to be really precise about what you're going to say. 
you can't waffle or give these like out like really long stories or analogies because the kids just can't they can't take that over the computer so you have to be really clear and really precise in what you want to say and as an English teacher I have so much information I want to give about the meaning of uh, Scrooge's childhood and a Christmas carol but I really can't give all the meanings and all the analysis I have to focus on the one specific point that I want them to get and really drive that home so that they get that they remember it they've applied it and they've understood it and that was actually a really good point in my learning is that if I drive this one point I think this is the most important point I make it accessible I make it repeated and I allow them to apply it to something that um, we're learning so we were learning how to do nanopositive sentences um, I apply it to that piece of information I saw really solid progress um, throughout the entirety of that module and I thought that was a really good piece of learning for me and a reflection I had on how that kind of worked and I could apply that when I go back to school. It's been interesting and a hard, kind of a hard thing that many teachers, if you're a teacher watching this, you'll probably have found with online learning is keeping yourself motivated in the routine at home. Um, I found it so difficult, just the monotony of teaching a lesson, planning a lesson, teaching a lesson, planning a lesson every day and then going for a walk. And that's like all I did with my day. And I just kind of got a bit discouraged. You're not seeing anyone, everyone's online. You're not getting the reaction from the kids that you're used to. Um, and so I tried to make my lessons quite fun. I got them to add emojis in when they joined the class and they, they kind of caught onto that. And there were some really good things to keep up morale because it's actually quite, quite hard to do teaching, like sitting on your own at home all day. And I don't think we all realized kind of the effect that would have on us and maybe the effect it's having on the kids and how we just really need to look out for them and like what they can manage with. They can't be sitting on a computer all day, every day. And finally, the responsibility of the students, right? At school, in the classroom, you have responsibility and you can accurately like, um, or you can quickly tell a student to like focus or get on with what they're doing and you can be account they can be accountable to you. But when you're on a screen and there's a no camera policy, you have no clue what the students are doing and whether they're doing it. And you might have 60 people in your call, um, but I would sometimes get like only 10 or 15 responses to the work. So that was kind of interesting and in how as a teacher, we expected to have that responsibility. Who has the responsibility for the students learning? And I thought that was an interesting question. Finally, um, I know this is a bit of a long video, but I'm just gonna quickly go over some of my biggest learning points so far throughout my first five months of teaching. Um, the first is that I think there's an expectation for teachers to kind of work ridiculous hours and always be available. Um, and personally, I didn't really subscribe to that view of teaching. And I heard a piece of advice that said, your responsibility as a teacher, and especially a teacher trainee, is to be the best teacher you can be. And there's often so many other roles that go along with being a teacher. You can be a parent, you can be um, a life educator, you can be a medic, you can be an emotional counsellor, a therapist, as well as a teacher, a behavioural person. You do all these different roles mixed up in one. Um, but at the end of the day, your job is to be an exceptional teacher. So all these other responsibilities that can kind of be thrust upon you or like dumped on you really quickly or you feel you should take responsibility for, you know, don't force yourself to go way over what is expected, especially when you're learning, because your, dis your job description is to be an exceptional teacher, um, and that should be your priority, and make sure you're doing that really well, which is what I've tried to focus on. Uh, secondly, is that kids respond really, really well to relationship, and um, I thought about teacher persona a lot before I started, and I wanted to be quite calm, collected, cool, but with the same point of there's a line, we know where it is, and if it's crossed, then there's a, there's a consequence for that. And so I found that I didn't actually have a lot of behavioral dis difficulty in my class. Like, um, there was the odd chatting, like, you know, the odd person not getting on with their work. A couple of people who love to sleep through my lessons, wasn't impressed with that. Um, but on the whole, I got on really well with most of my students. We had a good time, a productive time. 
Um, and I found that I did small things. So sometimes I would go out and play American football with the boys at lunch, um, with the year 10 boys, because I was only allowed to choose one group, I thought, for safety. And I spent a lot of time with year 10 anyway. So um, we played football and I had like a group of like 20 boys and we just throw the football um, at lunch. And I really, really enjoyed that. And it gave us a good connection point um, to chat about more than just like um, schoolwork. And I also started a little club which um, called Life Club, which is kind of like looking at doing the life skills that they don't teach you in school. And I got a really good response from that and we had some really interesting discussions about budgeting and about politics and about stating our point of view, about um, safety and responsibility. And that was really enjoyable to kind of see that other side and have a bit more. And it was really good for me to be able to have those other, other kind of relationship with the kid that wasn't just uh, me in charge of a classroom, you do the work, but we could have a bit more of an open discussion and treat each other a bit more like adults. So I really enjoyed those. And finally, in my persona, like being friendly and not getting angry quickly meant they had more respect for me. They knew where the line was, they knew there was punishment, but they knew I wouldn't get flustered and yell. So we, like, I never had to really fix any relationships because they were never broken. They knew they'd crossed the line, I'd given them the warning, so they got the consequence. And I kept that quite consistent. Well, I learned to keep that quite consistent. And finally, my last little bit to end this video is, as a teacher trainee, just taking that small step to improve something or to do something each day is the most important step. We're not gonna get it all right by any means, but if we do one little bit better each day and respond to the feedback, then over the period of time, we will get better. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my little, I guess, teach first five month update. It's been a while, probably should have done these monthly, but you know, um, you got one now. So I will see you when I do another one, which is hopefully not too long away. See ya.